Got it. Superstar, Leon Russell. And Bonnie Bramlett, of course, made famous in 1971 by Karen Carpenter. Uh, but the song had been around for a couple of years and uh, actually written by, well, let me tell you a little bit about the lesson first. Then I'll give you the, the history on the song because this is a song I have just um, loved my whole life. And it was, well, since I first heard it. And I finally realized where I first heard it just recently as I started doing info or started working on this. It was from uh, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. It was Rita Coolidge's version from Joe Cocker's 1970 album that that brought this song to my attention. Because in 1971, I really wasn't paying much attention to the Carpenters. But uh, but now I think Karen really did the definitive version. Well. No, if you look at some of the videos that I've attached to here, a later version of Bonnie singing this is tear-jerking. Not that Karen's wasn't, but... Um, so, no, I guess I'll get, let's go into the history of the song first, then I'll tell you about what I'm going to do in this lesson. So, um, Rita Coolidge, there was a whole group of... There was a cadre of musicians hanging around Delaney and Bonnie and friends. That included Eric Clapton and Leon Russell, and Rita Coolidge, and some of the group went on to be part of Derek and the Dominoes that Clapton formed right afterwards, so this is in about 1969. And um, they, uh, Rita kind of came up with this idea of, you know, writing a song about a groupie. Matter of fact, that was the original title. It was about the groupie who was in love with the rock star. And um, but Leon and Bonnie then sort of took the story and put it together in a, uh, in a kind of coherent way. And um, anyway, then, then Delaney and Bonnie did record it in 1969 as the B-side of a single that didn't do very well. So it stayed kind of obscure. But then um, when Joe Cocker put his Mad Dogs and Englishmen tour and band together the next year, he had Leon Russell and Rita Coolidge and a whole bunch of other people that were kind of from this same... same uh, neck of the woods, I guess, and uh, they started performing it, and then other people started covering it, and um, Bette Midler did a version on, it was on her album, uh, The Divine Miss M, but she also did a live version of it on the Johnny Carson show in 1971, February, I think, and uh, Richard Carpenter heard it and thought, I think we need to do this song. So, he introduced the song to his sister and the rest of the, the and the wrecking crew, the rest of the musicians that really did most of the Carpenters recordings back then and orchestras and such. And they did they did a lot of changes to it. In particular, they had to change the lyrics. They had to soften it up a little bit because of a line in the original about I can hardly wait to sleep with you again. Not quite um, Karen Carpenter material. So they, they changed that line a little bit. But I also think that Karen um, rephrased the lyrics um, into a much more interesting and um, musical, kind of poetic way than, than um, Rita and Bonnie, who were the other two recordings I was, I was familiar with. So anyway, uh, that's, that's, I guess, the history of the song. Now, and what we're going to talk... Oh, let me... A couple things. I will talk... The chart that I have about this is has got um, the, the progression that the Carpenters used. Hello, Bug. Um, and, uh, but the original was a little bit different, and so I've got that at the bottom of the page, too. We'll talk about the way that, um, that it showed up on the Delaney and Bonnie recording. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the Rita Coolidge or the Joe Cocker version, because that, there was something in my head, as far as the chord goes, where clearly in the Carpenters they used a B minor, but I heard B7 sus resolving to B7 before it gets into... work on the instrumental version of that just yet because I still haven't settled on if I'm going to do an instrumental version whether I want to do it in this key or not. Now speaking of keys, the original was in F minor, which if you need to do it in that key you can take my lesson and put a capo at the first fret and you can play along with any of those versions. Uh, the Carpenters, Rita's, or Bonnie's. They're all a half step higher. So if you find music to this or you know you'll see that it's not a guitar friendly key but E minor really is. So, the, when I play this with my friend Karina, we usually keep it fairly simple as far as what I'm doing. I don't do any fancy instrumentals in there, so a fairly simple accompaniments, and a lot of times it would just be straight arpeggios. Maybe a little pa 
passing bass notes. And here's what it sounds like with the suspended. And I would go into strumming in that part. Sometimes I would do a little more percussive start part with my right hand. We'll talk about both of those right hand techniques as far as this goes in the lesson, but mostly we're going to just talk about the chord progression and some variations in the chord progression. And um, the introduction that Richard Carpenter came up with is very unusual. You just heard me play that a few minutes ago. And it's not a real guitar friendly thing. There are some unusual chords, some stretchy ones. Before it gets to the E minor. And he was brilliant at this, with, with coming up with um, some jazzy, slightly off-the-wall little things. So I really, uh, I think he did a great job arranging this song for, for, uh, for the band and for Karen. So, okay, I think that is enough, um, enough talk and uh, ideas about what's coming up. Let's, uh, let's head into the lesson on Leon Russell and Bonnie Bramlett's, although Delaney, her husband at the time, also uh, gets a little bit of songwriting credit for this, and Rita Coolidge really could, should too, because uh, she really seems like she came up with the idea, and um, just didn't just didn't get her name on the page. So, anyway, that's it. Coming up, a lesson on Leon Russell's. I tend to think of it as Leon's song because I'm a big fan of his uh, superstar.